Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice Olympiad problem. I'm not exactly sure which Olympiad this was taken from, but I have a strong feeling this is from Russia. At least it originated in Russia because then, you know, some other tests or competitions uh, probably used it because it's a really nice problem. What's really nice about this problem, let me tell you, is that we have consecutive expressions, numbers, whatever you call them, quantities, in the denominators, x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 4. And their reciprocals are being added, and we get 0. How nice is that, right? Beautiful. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with one of them, right? Who knows? <laughs> let's start with the first one. Okay, great. Now, I kind of wrote this problem in a weird way because when I wrote it all together, it didn't look good. It was too small. That's why I kind of wrote, used uh, two different lines. Anyways, you get the idea. We're going to put these guys on the left-hand side. So it's going to look like this after the operation. 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 1 one plus 1 over x plus 2. That was the original version, by the way. I just modified it uh, to make it, you know, look a little better on a thumbnail i know you know thumbnails are important because if you don't have a good th thumbnail people are not going to click on it or so on and so forth anyways the the algorithm okay so let's go ahead and beat the algorithm okay shall we so now we have this sum and how do we solve it there are two ways as far as i know and if you know the third way please don't hide it share with us okay so first method so the first method is kind of brute forcey you know why because you just multiply everything. Isn't that cool? I mean, if you don't know what to do, that's what you do. That's what brute force is. You don't have an elegant method. You just do what is the most boring, longest method, okay? That's called brute force. Um, so how do you do it? Well, just distribute everything, and this is what you're going to get. Can I give you the result? Otherwise, it's going to take forever. But you get the idea. The, how do you make a common denominator, by the way? You just multiply this by x times x plus 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 4. You multiply this by x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 4. You get the idea. And you end up with something like this. And denominator doesn't matter. Once you make a common denominator, the numerator is what's going to equal 0. So here's the numerator. Ready? Drum roll. 5x to the 4th plus 40x cubed plus 105x squared plus 100x plus 24 equals zero. You probably could guess where the 24 comes from. One times two times three times four, or just four, uh, four factorial. Make sense? So far so good? Okay. Now, what do we do with this? It's a quartic. What can you do? You can go ahead and solve it using the quartic formulas. There is a bunch of them, right? There's a couple different ones. But one thing that we should do, I think, is to get rid of x cubed. We don't want the cubic term. So we want to depress. We want this quartic to be depressed. Sorry, quartic. I mean, uh, we need a depressed quartic, okay? So um, let's go ahead and do this. And how do you find that? I'm going to replace x with y plus minus something. How do you find that plus num minus number? You take this number divided by the coefficient of x to the fourth. Actually, I could probably put it this way. Multiply these two things. 5 times 4 equals what? 20. You divide the 40 by 20. And you change the sign. It's a plus sign. So I have to use a minus sign. Get the idea? That's how we do it. I mean, you can formulate it like ax to the 4th plus bx cubed. Blah, blah, blah. And then you would replace x with y minus b divided by 4a. It's the same idea. Make sense? Okay. Now, this turns into y minus 2, so we're going to replace x with y minus 2. And that kind of makes sense. You know why? Let me show you something real quick. If you replace x with y minus 2, this guy over here in the middle becomes y. How cool is that? Now, let's do it. And if you do it here and here and here and here everywhere, you're going to get something super nice. You know what that is going to look like? If you replace x with y minus 2, you get 5y to the 4th minus 15y squared plus 4 equals 0. 
that's awesome because you not only you got a depressed cortic you get a very very depressed cortic not only do you use the cubic term you also lose the linear y term which is nice and this is a bi quadratic so many words like weird terminology but this means that y squared can be replaced with something how about t t is good 5t squared minus 15t plus 4 equals 0. Let's go ahead and solve this using the quadratic formula, shall we? t equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 225, minus um, 4ac. That's going to be 80, 145. Okay, 145, I don't think it has a, uh, what is it called, perfect square. So we're just going to leave it like that. Okay, great. So this is t, but what is t? t is the drink. Well, not only that, it also means in our equation y squared. So set is equal to y squared and solve for y. How do you solve for y? Well, wait a minute. There are two y squared values and y squared equals something if it's positive. And yes, they're both positive. It's going to give us two solutions. So we should be getting four solutions. And of course, this is a quartic. Come on, what do you expect, right? So it's going to look like this. y equals plus minus the square root of 15 plus minus uh, square root of 145 divided by 10. By the way, you might be wondering, like, how do I use these plus minus signs? Do they have to be the same inside and outside? No. You take all combinations. Make sense? You take the plus with the plus, plus with this minus, blah, 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 so on and so forth. You get the idea, hopefully. But this is just y. And you're like, why? Okay, you get the idea? So x equals y minus 2. So we need to subtract 2 from this to get the x values and again I'm going to write in the plus minus form I mean you can separate them but who's going to do it right too much work we got to be lazy so that is going to be the x values and there's four of them consider all possibilities alrighty so far so good all right you ready for the second method let's proceed because second method is going to be I think really cool anyways so with the second method we do something differently obviously we don't want to do brute force, so we want to do something smarter. And that's why this qualifies to be the second method. And now we have this interesting sum of reciprocals, and they are consecutive. So we need to take advantage of that. This time, I want to pair up my numbers differently. Of course, it uses the same idea in a different way. There's a twist. I take these two together, add them up. The numerator is going to be x plus x plus 4, which is 2x plus 4. And the denominator is just going to be x squared plus 4x. Easy, right? And then I take this guy and this guy together. Again, uh, they are kind of symmetrical, sort of. And the numerator, notice that, is the same to x plus 4, which is really cool. That's the, actually the trick with this problem. That's how they designed it so that they would bring the same thing. Isn't that cool? I mean, even thinking about these problems, like coming up with a problem like this, I think is genius. I didn't come up with the problem, so I can't take credit, but... I just love the problem, okay? So, and then what am I going to do with this? <laughs> Throw it away. Put it on the other side. Okay, cool. Let's leave it like that. We're going to do something very interesting here, which I guess you can call hocus pocus abracadabra. I'm going to factor out a 2 and write this as 2 times x plus 2. But not only that, because uh, numerators are the same, I'll factor the numerators out and end up with fractions. How nice is that? Well, this doesn't look very nice, but don't make a common denominator. You know why? Because you'll be in big trouble if you do. Now, I have an, a, a 1 over x plus 2 on the right-hand side, and I have an x plus 2 on the left-hand side. Guess what? This looks like what? Square x plus 2, what do you get? x squared plus 4x plus 4. Aha. Uh -huh. That's the idea. So we're going to do the following. Multiply both sides by x plus 2. This will become x plus 2 squared. And when I multiply by x plus 2 here, x plus 2 is going to cancel out. I'm going to get a number on the right-hand side. Everybody will be happy because everything will be awesome. All right, great. So let's do it. We can now write this as 2 times x plus 2 squared. And then divide, I mean, multiply by 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals negative 1. And if you expand this, you're going to get x squared plus 4x plus 4 multiplied by 2 and then multiply by the sum of these two reciprocals guess what we're going to use substitution and that'll solve your problems right substitution is awesome so we can go ahead and call this u that's u and u are 
awesome or u is awesome and then go ahead and solve it because this is going to be quadratic beautiful but one thing to keep in mind though you could also do this instead of using the u i have a better idea once you get it in this form i think this will work better you can go ahead and do a different hocus pocus here because this is just nice so here's what you can do uh, you can go ahead and expand it and uh, multiply by 2 so that's going to give you 2x squared plus 8x plus 8 divided by x squared plus 4x and then this is going to give you the same 2x squared plus 8x plus 8 divided by x squared plus 4x plus 3 is equal to negative 1 I don't know what happened to the negative sign and now here's the coolest part 2x squared plus 8x divided by x squared plus 4x and then plus 8 over x squared plus 4x and then here 2x squared plus 8x plus 6 over x squared plus 4x plus 3 plus 2 I split up the 8 into 6 plus 2 you get the idea and now don't worry about the negative 1 this is going to be a 2 this is going to be a 2 and I have 4, subtract 4, you're going to get negative 5, and you have these two sums, use substitution and get to the results. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to let us know which method you like better. Second method, I was thinking it will be shorter, but I kind of showed you two alternatives, and bye-bye.